for me, I do not yet see that value in my experiences. And hopefully that will come in time. All right, so I am back with an update video because I've had some new experiences with this fountain pen. After spending some time with this fountain pen, I have realized by touch alone that this is a very, very high quality fountain pen. And the one thing that made me pause and realize how nice it actually is was the fact that I was constantly holding and massaging this fountain pen while I was doing other tasks or thinking about other things. And it's not very often that I will pick up a fountain pen and just hold it and do this with it. But for some reason, I actually want to do that with this fountain pen. There are no angles or sharp corners anywhere on this fountain pen. It feels really nice in my hands. And I have some other fountain pens that are also high gloss in my collection, but they don't feel like this one. So I'm gonna bring some of them out. All of these fountain pens have some level of high gloss finish. You can see it, see the reflection, but this is the smoothest one. The only one that gives it a run for its money is my Leonardo Memento Zero Grande Mother of Pearl. This one is very soft, very nice in the hand, but that sensation gets interrupted by this center band here. And I actually feel that texture. For the Twisby Eco, very nicely executed fountain pen, but there are seams that I can feel on this fountain pen. I didn't realize that there were bumps and ridges on this fountain pen until I started examining why I didn't want to put this one down. And so if I take a look Look at this fountain pen under a bright light. I can actually see the waves and ridges in the pen body and on the cap. These are high gloss, but they're not as smooth as the Aurora. There's still a little bit of resistance. They're not quite there to the level of this one. So yes, this is a very smooth fountain pen. Everywhere that I touch, it is just so nice. So really, long story short, this feels like an absolute dream to hold. I love, I love doing this. And I like looking at it as well. So another thing that I discovered when writing with this fountain pen is that I actually really love the feedback that this nib gives me. I really do love the feedback of the Sailor nibs. And I recently discovered that I also like the feedback that the Aurora gives. And it's it's not as strong as the Sailors. It's much more subtle, but it gives me that same satisfaction, that same feeling of writing on paper. The only issue that I have with this is that I prefer writing with this on non tamoy River paper. I have a sample sample of Idoful paper. I also have Endless Regalia paper. After some testing, I realized that I prefer this fountain pen on these papers more than on Tamoy River paper. So this is just a sample of the turquoise ink, the Aurora turquoise ink that I currently have in this fountain pen. I just love the feedback that I get on these two papers. It's smooth, but it's not so smooth that it feels like I'm writing on glass. I love the texture of these two papers. On Tamoy River paper, it just feels a little bit less, less lubricated, like I'm writing with a drier ink on Tamoy River paper. And so it doesn't quite glide along the paper like I expect, but it's still, it's a pleasant enough experience. I just prefer it on Regalia or Idoful paper, something with a little bit more texture to it. I've already mentioned that this feels like a high quality fountain pen. It looks like a high quality pen, but I was a little bit turned off by the packaging actually. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with Aurora, but it has everything to do with my previous experiences with another brand. Ferris Will Press has beautiful packaging. I love their packaging. They are so thoughtful when it comes to designing something beautiful, something that you will enjoy using. I love all of the thoughtfulness that goes into Ferris Wheel Press products. But my issue is they put a lot of thought in the quality of their packaging, but not enough thought into the quality of their products. So I've been burned by some of their inks and I've been burned by their brush fountain pen. And so when I open this up and there's this shiny, this glassy black box, and there is a card that gives you a link or a QR code to go and visit and, and find out more information about the city of Matera. It was beautiful. It's awesome. But it has me wondering like, is this 
what I paid for? Is this what you pay for when you get an, an Aurora fountain pen? Do you pay for packaging and do you pay for the QR codes and the extra booklets that come in the box and, and all of those things? Or are you paying for the fountain pen? And I understand that it is all of the above. You want an unforgettable experience when you pay a certain amount of money for a fountain pen. But I was hoping to be wowed by the fountain pen itself more than the packaging. I think that my initial experience with the ink put a damper on my entire experience as a whole. So I wasn't so excited about the fountain pen because the ink was underwhelming. And you can probably see that my cuticles are still stained by the turquoise ink that came with the pen. Packaging aside, this is a great fountain pen. But I do want to try a darker ink in this fountain pen to see if it makes a difference on Tomoe River paper, since I really love it on this paper and I really love it on the Endless Regalia paper. I, I have no doubt that whatever ink I choose for this fountain pen is gonna work on these papers, but I want to try something that's a little bit more lubricated, a bit thicker, wetter ink to go on Tomoe River paper to see if it gives me that same feedback that I love on these papers, if I can get that same feedback on a Tomoe River paper because Tomoe River paper is what I use for my journaling and my planning uh, most often. So I'm going to, I'm doing most of my testing here. Okay, so let's take a look at the nib line width for this fountain pen and do some comparisons with other fountain pens. The Aurora 88 fine nib is about the same, it gives about the same line width as the Sailor Pro Gear medium and the Twisby Eco medium. So the Leonardo gives the thinnest lines followed by Sailor 19. 1911 large, the fine nib. This is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim medium. And then the Aurora 88 fine nib, the Twisby Eco medium nib. And just for kicks, that is the architect nib on the Momento Zero Grande. It kind of sounds like the sailor is whispering on this paper. The Aurora is louder than the medium sailor nib. Yeah. It's actually louder than both sailors. So I think it really depends on the type of mood that I'm in. <laughs> for these fountain pens. I know I would probably gravitate more towards this one because it is the color that I love and it's got the ink that I really do love as well. So I guess I have to ask myself this question again. Would I purchase this fountain pen at $600 or eight to $900 if it was not on sale for $313? Probably not. Am I glad that I purchased it? for $313? Absolutely, yes. I'm actually really pleased with this fountain pen and I love writing with it. I really think that I would be much more happy with this fountain pen if it was in a colorway that appealed more to me. If it was in one of the greens or one of the browns that I really enjoy. I love how the dark blue is distributed or hiding very subtly between the different shades of blue and white. I think that's the my favorite part about this fountain pen, the dark blue in the crevices. The other thing that I wish was different about this pen is just the fact that I prefer it on non Tomoe River paper. Currently, I prefer it on other papers, but I hope to find a fountain pen ink that will work with this pen so well, it is going to be a joy to use on Tomoe River, even on Tomoe River paper, sailors. This one, I find myself taking it out just to hold it and to look at it. and to feel how seamless everything is from top to bottom. I feel the ridges, but there is nothing, for me, there's nothing unpleasant about the way that this fountain pen feels. If you can describe, please describe what you love about Aurora fountain pens, because it's actually very difficult for me to put into words what I like so much about this fountain pen. I, I just love holding it. It is so smooth. So these two fountain pens were kind of in the same price bracket. And even though this fountain pen is so much smaller, I really think that it's, it's still worth its price tag. There are many fountain pens in the same price bracket that don't look exciting, but this is more up my alley. I enjoy looking at this fountain pen. I enjoy holding this fountain pen and I enjoy writing with this fountain pen. Not the packaging, not the extra information or even the inspiration behind the colors of the pen. 
or the color of the ink, but I am happy with the Aurora 88. And I can see myself enjoying any other Aurora that I purchase in the future. Let me know what your experience has been with Aurora 88s and Aurora Optimas. Do you like the cigar shape or do you like the flat finials on the Aurora Optimas? What is your preference? What colors do you have or what colorways are you, are you excited to see? Would you love to see? But yeah, let's have some conversations about this brand. What do you think about their packaging? The amount of care that they take in the packaging. What do you think about the amount of care that they take in developing, manufacturing their fountain pens and the colors and the materials that they select and the fountain pen nibs that they make in house? All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I I will see you on the next video. Bye.